NOAA announced today carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere hit a record high last month. According to the report, the average carbon dioxide levels for May peaked at over 414 parts per million. That's a significant increase from last year. CBS News weather producer David Parkinson joins us now to talk more about this. Good to see you. Good to see you, Vlad. So what does this actually mean? What is this report trying to tell us and what does it mean for the environment? Well, so what this means is there's more and more carbon uh, being put into the atmosphere, uh, which, which we know. And now we know that the rate of the increase that we're seeing in the atmosphere uh, is uh, at its second highest uh, on recorded history. So not only are the levels exceptionally high, but the rate that um, we're adding more is also exceptionally high. And so the concern is we're sort of got this runaway freight train situation, which is um, all of this additional carbon continues to be put into the atmosphere. Uh, one of the interesting things is, is that we had a daily high above 415 for the first time back in May. And we said, oh, that's a cause from concern, but we figured the month would sort of even itself out. It turns out that the month itself at 414.7, which basically rounds to 415, um, is an example of showing you uh, that this is not something that is going to spike and go back down, but rather continues to increase. If you look on a short-term basis, it's a... Um, of uh, mostly linear, but a, a, an accelerating curve upward. If you look at a, a pattern over the last millions of years, since way before humans were on this earth, uh, you really start to see it spike right in the last hundred years, which would, of course, coincide with our release of a lot more fossil fuels into the atmosphere. So we have been releasing more fossil fuels into the atmosphere. Uh, we've been deforesting parts of the, the, the planet. I just came back from Brazil where we uh, talked a lot about deforestation in Brazil and the Amazon and what that means for the environment. But what's causing this particular uptick? So, I mean, this particular uptick where they take the reading is, is on the top of a, a mountain in Hawaii, which is to ba basically be as clear as we can to ha not have any interference from any particular uh, sort of landmass. Uh, what we're, we're noticing here in terms of this increase is it's just the general sum of all the things uh, that are going on around the earth. Uh, there's no, no one particular, hey, it was this factory, hey, it was this, you know, particular action. It's that all this stuff is going to continue to compound, which is why uh, the emphasis you're seeing sort of in the political arena is, is that there are these arbitrary deadlines. We have 12 years, we have 20 years. Do we actually have those number of years? It's hard to say, but what we do know is the sooner we can stop producing additional carbon in the atmosphere, the more likely we are to cap that rise at a lower level. So if we stop producing carbon today, the number would not stop. There is a, enough that is baked in there that it would continue to rise. However, uh, we would be decreasing uh, that increase, you know, the rate of the increase, which is, is really the thing we're most concerned about. And I guess the question that scientists have right now is what is that point where that will not happen? In other words, you go right. past an inflection point where even if you stop, right. we're up that creek without a paddle. Right. Well, and, and it really comes down to a question of just how much, um, you know, how much warming goes into the atmosphere, right? So there's the amount of carbon and then there is the amount of warming, which they're not a one-to-one -one correlation. You can offset a little bit. Uh, but realistically, yes, it is, it is that concern that if we hit 500 parts per million or, or, or 450 or something like that, uh, that we will at that point have baked in too much warming. Look, we've already seen manifestations of how bad this is. You see the flooding that's going on uh, in parts of the Midwest. It's the wettest 12-year period in 124-year history. And we know that extreme rain events are highly correlated to climate change, right? So everybody wanted to link the tornadoes. Tornadoes are a little bit hard, harder to link. Uh, but heavy rain events are something that you can almost uh, guaranteedly uh, sync up with climate change. And so if you uh, don't want to see what's been happening there, you have a vested interest in trying to curb those emissions and trying to get us to a place. There's no one policy answer that's correct, but we need to be having a conversation about what the policy solution is, not whether there's a problem. Uh, really insightful analysis. David Parkinson, always great to have you, my friend. Thank sure you. Sure thing.